In this episode of Be Hooked Crochet, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet a sun hat. Now you can find the written instructions and the supplies list for the pattern we'll be talking about here at BeHookedCrochet.com slash sun hat. I'm your host, Brittany, and if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin our sun hats by creating a slip knot. And chain three. Now we're going to join with the slip stitch to the first chain that we made. And this is going to start the ring because we're going to be crocheting in the round from here on out. Now it's a little bit difficult to find the center of the ring from here. So what I like to do is grab each side and pull them, them apart. And when you do that, you can sort of see the center of the ring open up. Well, do what you can to maybe stick your finger in that hole or just hold on to it the best you can so that you know where to work your stitches. We're going to begin round one by chaining three. And this chain three is going to count as one double crochet. Now we're going to make nine more double crochet in the center of the ring. That's gonna give us a total of 10. Once you have all 10 double crochet, again, counting that chain three as one, we're going to join with a slip stitch to our third chain. That wraps up round number one. Moving on to round number two, we need to continue increasing because of course we want our hat to be bigger than this. So we're going to do that by making two stitches in every one stitch. So specifically two double crochet in every stitch. We're going to begin the round by chaining three and that is going to count as a double crochet. We're going to make our first double crochet in the same place where our chain three is coming from. So you see this little hole right there? That is where this stitch is coming from, the chain three. So we're gonna double crochet there. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. This is just one. Now we're going to make two double crochets in every stitch. So I'm gonna find the next stitch, which is right here. Work your hook under both legs of the V. And double crochet twice. Then move on to your next stitch and work two double crochets in that stitch. When you finished with round two, you'll have a total of 20 stitches. It's always a good idea to count as you go along so you know that you're on the right track. When you get to the end of your round, it'll be really tempting to try and put two stitches right here. So this really does look like the last stitch, but in fact, it's also part of this chain three. So we did things a little bit different. We chained three, we added our first double crochet right next to it in the same space. Why? Well, so there's a couple of different ways of doing it. The other way would be to add the double crochet in this space right next to the chain. Now you can do either way. This pattern specifies this way. So in order to avoid having too many stitches at this point, 
you'll just want to count. So count your chain three as a stitch. You'll make sure you have 20 double crochet. You'll see just a little piece right here and that's completely normal. So you'll join with a slip stitch to the third chain. And that's gonna finish up round two. On round three, we're going to begin our lace pattern. What we want to do is chain three, and as always, this is going to count as a stitch, as a double crochet stitch. We're gonna find that same place where the chain three is coming from. So you see that little hole right there? That's where we're gonna work the rest of our stitches. So this counts as a double crochet. We're going to make another double crochet in the same space. And we'll chain two and put two more double crochets in the same space. Now we're going to skip the next stitch and work a repeat. But I do wanna bring this to your attention. The next stitch is really easy to skip. It's very small since it's right next to that slip stitch and you can just barely see the V right here. That's the stitch we're going to skip. So make sure you are not jumping ahead. Make sure that you're skipping this stitch right here and working the repeat in the stitch that follows. So the repeat for this round is we'll skip a stitch and then we'll make two double crochets. So there's one and two. Now this is all worked in that same stitch. We'll chain two and two more double crochets in the same stitch right here. Then we're going to skip the next stitch and we'll work our repeat. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And we'll just repeat that until we get to the end of the round. And when you get to the end of your round, you want to just pay extra attention. Make sure you're not adding more repeats than you need. So what I have here is I have the stitch that I'm going to skip, the stitch that I'm going to work into, and then I'll have one stitch left over. That will continue the repeat. So in between each one of these groups, I'm skipping a stitch. And that doesn't change because we're coming to the end of the round. So I'm going to work my last repeat here.
And then I want to locate my chain three, find the third chain, so the one that's right on the top, and I'll join with a slip stitch there to finish off round three. At the end of round three, you want to have 10 little points. So 10 chain two spaces. You wanna double check that and make sure you're on the right track before moving on to round four. So what we're going to do here is we are at the point where we slip stitched into our third chain, but we need to start at a different point from where we are now. So what we need to do is find the next stitch. So it's sometimes easier to find the post. So I have my chain three, that's where my hook's coming from. Find the next post in line, and then just look for that V. And again, the one that's right next to the slip stitch always looks a little bit wonky. It's really easy to skip. So you'll insert your hook into, those, into that stitch. So under both legs of the V, you'll slip stitch. So now we've moved over by one stitch. We need to do that one more time. So we're gonna find the first chain two space. We'll insert our hook just into the open space there and slip stitch. So now we've just moved our position over two places and this is where we need to start round four. Well, round four is very similar to round three, but we're just increasing a little bit. We're going to start by chaining three and this counts as a double crochet. We're going to make two more double crochets in the same space. So we're still working in that chain two space. All right, now we have three stitches there. We're going to chain two. That's gonna be another one of these little points. And then we're gonna work three double crochets in the same chain two space. Okay, now that we have that first one situated, we're gonna start our repeat. Well, we don't really have to count too much for this round. We just wanna look for the chain two spaces. So I'm going to find the next chain two space and I'm gonna work this repeat. I'll do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So it's almost the same as the previous round, but we've just added an extra stitch. So I finished that, skip over to the next chain two space, work my repeat, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. We're just gonna do this for every chain two space. When you've reached the end of your round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the third chain that's from that first repeat we did. Now that finishes off round number four. And at this point, we're still going to have 10 points. We just always wanna double check, make sure we're on the right track as we continue to move forward. Now moving on to round number five, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We want to shift ourselves over until we've reached this first chain two space. So I'm going to find the very first stitch, again, making sure that I don't just skip this one altogether because it's kind of hard to find. We'll slip stitch there, slip stitch into the next stitch, and then slip stitch into the chain two space. And we're set up for round five. Here we're going to chain three, and that counts as a double crochet. This time we're going to work our repeat a little bit different. It's basically the same, but we're increasing by another stitch. So we're going to make three double crochets into this chain two space. Now 
and then we'll chain two and work four double crochets in the same space. Now it's gonna get a little crowded. You may have to shift your stitches over, but that's no big deal. It actually makes it look a little better when you do that. Now we're going to find the next chain two space and we'll work this repeat. We'll do four double crochets, chain two, and four double crochets. And we'll just repeat that. We'll find the next chain two space, work four double crochets, chain two, four double crochets, and we'll repeat that until we get to the end of the round. So at the end of round five, you're going to find your third chain from that first group You'll join with a slip stitch there. And that's gonna finish off round five. Moving on to round six, again, we're going to shift our position over to the first chain two space. So we will slip stitch in the first stitch there. And I keep pointing that out because this one is so easy to miss. slip stitch into the next stitch and the one after that. So we've made three slip stitches and now we'll slip stitch into the chain two space. Now from here, we're going to chain three, work three double crochets, Now chain two and work four more double crochets in the same space. So this section of the repeat is the same. We're going to do four, two, and four in each one of our chain two spaces, but we are going to add an additional step. Once we have that first group, what we've been used to doing is finding the chain two space, jumping over there and working our repeat. But we're not going to do that for this round. What we're going to do is jump to the gap that's in between. So if you wanna count them out, there's four stitches here. We're going to double crochet in between the fourth and the fifth double crochet. It's really just easier if you eyeball it. Just right in this little space here, you don't have to work in a stitch or anything like that. Just insert your hook in the space and work a double crochet. Now we can skip to the chain two space, work four double crochets, chain two, four double crochets. And then we will start our repeat again. So we'll find that space in between these two groups, 
double crochet in the space. Skip to the next chain two space, work four double crochets, chain two, four double crochets. And that is our repeat for this round. Now once you've made it to the end of your round, you don't want to forget your double crochet in between this group here. So we're just maintaining our stitch pattern. And from here, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the third chain. Now we're moving on to round seven, and this is the last round that we're gonna cover before we get to a pretty significant repeat. So we're going to start off by shifting our position over to the chain two space. So I'm going to slip stitch into the first three stitches. And then slip stitch into the chain two space. Now I'm going to chain three. We're gonna start this off just like we're used to. We'll make three double crochets. And then we'll chain two. And four double crochets in the same space. And we're gonna to skip to the double crochet that's in between these groups here. So I'm gonna find that stitch, which is right here is the V for it. And I'm going to make two double crochets into that same stitch. And then we'll start our repeat. We'll jump to the next chain two space. We'll make four double crochets, chain two, four double crochets. And when you finish that group, you'll find your one double crochet that's off by itself. You'll make two double crochets into that. And that's our repeat for this round. We're just gonna continue that until we get to the end of the round. When you've reached the end of round seven, you'll wanna make sure you get your two double crochets in that last little stitch there. And then we'll join with the slip stitch again to that third chain. So we're starting now on round eight and we're going to shift our position over. So we'll slip stitch into the first three stitches and into that chain two gap space. And then we're gonna begin our familiar repeat. So we'll chain three, that'll count as one double crochet. We'll make three more in the same chain two space. Then we'll chain two and work four more double crochet in the same chain two space. Now we'll jump over to where we see our two double crochets. We're not gonna increase or anything here. We're just going to make one 
double crochet into each one of them. So there's the first one and the second. Then we'll jump to the next chain two space and work our repeat. Four double crochets, chain two, and four double crochets. Then we're just going to repeat that sequence until we get to the end of the round. So I've finished my group here. I'll work one double crochet into each of these two stitches here. Then jump to the chain two space, four double crochet, chain two, four double crochet. So go ahead and finish up round eight. So I'm just wrapping up my last couple of stitches here. We'll join with a slip stitch to the third chain. And that will finish up round eight. Now what we want to do from here is repeat round eight for a few, you know, a few more rounds. So for rounds nine, 10, and 11, we're just going to repeat what you saw here for round eight. Once you finish that, we'll come back to the tutorial and we'll talk about the band. Once you finish through to round 11, your hat looks like this, and we just have a couple more details to cover in order to finish. So right now we have the majority of the hat crocheted. Now we're moving on to the band. Round 12 is the first round of the band. We're going to begin by chaining one, and this time that chain one is not going to count as a single crochet. I'm going to locate the same spot where my chain one is coming from, and I'm gonna single crochet there. Now, if you would like, you can place a stitch marker in this first stitch, just because single crochets are sometimes a little harder to see. So that way you'll know that this is your first stitch. Now we're going to proceed by making one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And again, you wanna be careful of that next one, the one that's right next to our first single crochet, because that stitch is hard to see. So we'll work one there, single crochet in the next two stitches. And when we get to the chain two space, we're gonna make two single crochets there. Next, we're going to make one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. That's gonna cover four from this group, the two double crochets that are by themselves, and the four going up the other side. And when you reach the next chain two space, you'll make two single crochets there. And that's gonna start our repeat. Now what you'll do at this point is just finish up this repeat. We'll get back around to the beginning of the round and then we're gonna go into another larger section where we're just repeating the same round. When you've made it to the end of round 12, you will have a total of 120 stitches. You can always double check that, make sure you're on the right track. But honestly, if you're a stitch or two short or over, you know, at this point, it's not gonna make that big of a deal. We're just going to continue a very simple repeat for the remainder of the pattern. 
So the first thing I want to do is locate my stitch marker, or if you didn't use one, just find your first stitch. I'm going to remove this just for a second. You will need some kind of stitch marker for the last few rounds of the pattern. Now, if you don't have a stitch marker like this, you could use a bobby pin or a safety pin or something like that that you might have laying around the house, or you could just cut a scrap piece of yarn. And we're going to do that because we aren't going to join with the slip stitch. All I'm going to do is find my first stitch and work a single crochet into that stitch. Now this is called working in the spiral and I typically like to use this when I'm working with single crochet because you don't have a join that's, you know, sometimes can be unsightly. So this we are just going to mark our first stitch again with the stitch marker. So this is the first stitch of the next round. So this is round number 13. Then all we're going to do for the rest of the hat is make one single crochet into every stitch. And we're gonna do that for rounds 13 through 22. So that's what I need for you to do at this point. You'll finish this round that we're on here. You'll just carry your stitch marker with you so when you get to the very last stitch, you'll remove your stitch marker, make your first single crochet there, and replace the stitch marker that's going to mark the first stitch of the following round. Once you have crocheted rounds 13 through 22, just like we discussed, we'll come back to the video, we'll talk about finishing and weaving in your ends. Well, off camera, I went ahead and crocheted my final rounds of the brim here, and this is what it should look like. Now, something you can do if you're sort of having a hard time counting your rows, since we're working in a spiral, it's a little bit different. So we started back on round 12, was the first round of single crochet. So you would just count 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So you would count before the stitch marker. So once you get to that point, you can remove your stitch marker and we're going to make a couple of slip stitches because if we were to just fasten off here, we would have a bit of a jog there because of the height difference between this round and this round. So we'll correct that by making a slip stitch into the next stitch. And then we'll just do that once more slip stitch into the next single crochet. And there you can see that helps to correct that jog. So from here, we'll just trim our working yarn, pull that tail through the loop. And now all we need to do is weave in the end. So let's have a look at how to do that. So we have two ends to weave in if we were fortunate enough that we didn't have to change out skeins in between. So I'm going to start with the one in the middle. And what I like to do is just run it around in a full circle. So just take the darning needle, work it under the stitches. And depending on how long your tail is, you may be able to go a couple times around in a circle and that is even better. So just do what you can, pull it nice and tight and trim it off. Now for our other end, we wanna make sure that we, again, are weaving it in on the wrong side of the hat, so I've just flipped it inside out there. And, you know, there's a couple of things that we can do. So the way we fastened off, we pulled the tail through the loop on our hook. That does create a little bit of a stitch sort of in the wrong direction. So what we're going to do, I'm just gonna pull that out. And this is the active loop. So after we trimmed our working yarn, this is what we were left with on our hook. If we just pull that through, then we can do an invisible join. 
to work the invisible join, we're just going to take our tail and work it under both loops of the next stitch that's right in front of it. Pull that through. Then we'll find the stitch where it was coming from. So I just inserted it through this stitch. I'm gonna find the one behind it and go in from the top in between. So I'm just catching the back loop. Now once we've done that, we can go ahead and weave in our ends and I just like to run my tail underneath several stitches. So just going in a straight row in one direction and then working it back through the other side. So then working it back in the other direction. And then once you have that nice and secure, you can simply trim off your tail.